Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another fun-filled, jam-packed, grassroots, down-home, independent... Did I leave grassroots? No, I just said grassroots. Uh, Good news. Good news? Interactive. Interactive! Thank you! Oh, I just got stuck there for a minute. Interactive program of its kind. Thanks for tuning in. And um, now for our intros and our announcements. But we have a very special show not planned out for you as usual. So stay tuned. May 16th, go green. Tom and Kathy are at it again. Um, if you haven't been to the energy fair in Woodstock, it is a must go to. There's a fellow named Lloyd Hamilton. Um, I wish I could tell you what he does, but I'm sure it's very informative and educated and uh, gonna help us uh, go with the green team. Uh, NYSERDA. What does that stand for, David? New York? Uh, energy, energy Research and Development, I think. New York Energy New York Research energy and Development, development. something like that. So they're going to be there and help us uh, rehone our minds to the ecologically green economy. What else is in the news? Oh, this Saturday, March 14th, Steve Gordon is playing his Bansuri flute with Ray Spiegel and Tabla on drums at the Mothership. This is one of my most very favorite um, times when I go there and listen to their ragas. It's so beautiful. It's a very high music. Let's see. Oh, I just want to say, hi, Grandma and Grandpa. I love you. Um, thanks, Mom. I got the money. This affords me to sit here and do this right now. Thank you, Mom. Uh, thank you, everybody's, everybody's, everybody's mom. Thanks for changing my boots when I got too dirty. Um, also, looking for FOD Fest folks, for all you musicians out there, there's a very cool thing going on. Um, friends of Daniel Pearl, um, remember him, he was a journalist, he got taken away um, somewhere in the Middle East, and he was a friend of and family of many people, and he was a musician. Um, and his saga lives on. Pakistan. Say it again? In Pakistan. In Pakistan. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody's informed here. So um, uh, his friend is keeping that going. And uh, you can have FOD Fest everywhere. And you can just donate some money to a good cause, 100 bucks. And uh, yeah, I like that. I like that. We have Cambies coming, treating us with some good information tonight. And I did want to mention one thing. Thank you, David. I like that. It makes me feel like I'm in the Sahara or something. Um, I noticed that when I was watching the, some of these shows um, on Woodstock TV. Uh, no, Woodstock dash tell dash uh, dash vision on our archival website, that there's these little bubbles that show up right here that talk about like. What's that cooking woman that everyone watches after Oprah? The cook, see no one knows who she is because we're in Woodstock. But there's like these little bubbles that say like go to her website or like, you know, you know, buy clothes, buy, consume, you know, watch MTV. But I'm telling you, don't pay any attention to these bubbles here because this is not what the show is about. Yeah, that's on the screen, check it out. So that's what they see, yeah. So, oh, we have a phone call. Woodstock Television, no. tell us what your vision is. Hello? Hi, that's my mom. Hi, mom. Hello? Hi. Oh, I can, uh, oh, I can hear you now. Hi, it tell Journey it's Rachel Ray. Oh, thank you. Oh, my mom. And uh, tell her Grandma and I are watching in Key West, but we're getting slapback sound. Sounds like she's in, um, it's like an earth chamber or something. Yeah, I hear, th I hear that. It's pretty. Sorry, Mom, the technology here okay, is Okay, we, we love you. And, Dave, you're doing a great job. Just get a little echo out. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Keep up the good work. Um, I have no idea why it does that. It's, uh. The technology here is a little bit different. It's very hi-fi, lo-fi. Anyway, yes, thank you. 
It's Rachel Ray, like buy Rachel Ray cookbooks. But I say invent your own. Go into your refrigerator or go into your garden on your lawn where you've not been killing the dandelions and growing wild tomatoes. And uh, um, hey, what happened? <laughs> and go and make your own tomato sauce. Go invent your own things and stop watching television. Um, except. You know, if you're watching Woodstock television, that's okay. Um, you know, because television tends to put subliminal messages. Wait, what was that? Did I see something? No, yeah. No, you, you like television. Television. Yeah, they show subliminal messages. I mean, we don't do that here on Woodstock television. But, <laughs> but we don't encourage you to watch television because I tell you, I've been watching television lately and I've gotten a little bit depressed. I, d I don't know. I think... I feel, what was that one? Wait, that's oh, yeah. No, let's get one that works here. here, we go, here we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, so we don't do any subliminal advertising here. We just encourage you to become like the alpha waves. Oh, uh, a Woodstock television. What's your vision? Yeah. Say hello again. Hello again, Woodstock television, you're on. Can you hear me? Yes, now we can. Can you hear me? Sorry, there's a total lapse. Hello? Hi. Listen over the phone. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to, I just wanted to explain something. Oh, how you doing, Cardini? I can't even Cardini? hear you. What's up? I just wanted to, I just wanted to explain something. Okay. Well, okay, there's a, like a three, two minute lag. Okay, okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say He heard. He <laughs> this is so The reason that you got those blurbs on the stream is because I'm only recording the Ustream T V. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right so what on. we gotta do is we gotta get the null soft stream going. The n another form. Okay. Right on. Right on. Thank you. Thank you, Cardini. Thank I'd like to make tell everyone. Cardini. And the town had it, but for some reason, it's not working. All right. We're, we got to work on that. <laughs> so will someone please notify the officials? Thanks, Cardini. You've done, you, you're doing an amazing job. Thanks for making this dream of reality. He's actually one of the fellows who have, have really helped Woodstock Television be what it is today. So without any further Mishi Goss. Oh, I just one more thing. My friend Alana sent me this and it's a whole thing about bras still cause breast cancer. Our patients dressed to kill. So I, I don't want to go into this. this is a whole long thing about women breast cancer rates going up after mammograms and deodorants leading to breast cancer and mothers who don't breastfeed. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I'm sure if you're really interested in that topic, you might go and check it out. But hey, there's nothing wrong with bra burning. I'm telling you, they were ahead of their time. So I think we have some interesting things. We're all gonna take our bras off. Actually, I didn't wear mine after I saw that article. Uh, come on down, Cambies. We got some good information here from this gentleman that's gonna um, maybe elucidate us to some of the fine subtleties of Woodstock politics. Yes, you can certainly bring one. That, I think that one's right. like a butterfly. Uh-huh. Doesn't it? It looks like a butterfly standing on its head. Well, it depends which way you hold it. I think and so. And this one looks like uh, if 
Well, um, no, I got so many being so busy. I don't even know what day uh, it is. You don't even know. Yeah. I don't think uh, today is the day where we don't care what day it is. Yeah. Let's just all just absorb the moment. It's a full moon. It's a full moon today. That explains Happy it. Happy full moon, everybody. That explains it. Um, so. I was just taping, um, signs being taken off i don't know how many people have seen that already uh calling for the impeachment of liz and calling for the what? impeachment yeah what which is, which is another that's tape so that I, bogus <laughs> that's another tape this that I woman made. has held the fort down for years and years plus impeachment applies crime that is ridiculous and, and, uh, oh come on but anyway that's not let's, why i'm here let's get something uh, let's get so something what here. happened was at the same time i heard just as i was going home that there was a sit-in at the community center right, by, right here where by, we are. whoa <laughs> and that looks like a fish yeah it's a fish <laughs> that's been thrown around by a, a monsoon <laughs> So anyways, going back to the seniors, at the they, they were having a demo next door. Right next door. Because they had been locked out. But anyway, rather than me giving the plot away, uh, roll, usually they say roll tape, but in this yeah. case it's a flat disc. Roll a, tape. Roll DVD. Did they literally get locked out? Like they were not. Well, they all... it was canceled on them without their knowledge. Other seniors who use the community center have been aroused at what has been happening to the art class, and they've come to support it. And because, especially because there was an announcement that the art class wasn't supposed to meet today when we've been meeting for 25 years. An edict was issued by the town clerk to our chair saying that as of five days from then there would not to be an art class if the art class wouldn't move to another time slot because the maintenance crew had told them that they must come in and clean every day from 2 to 3.30 on Monday, on Mondays particularly. The art class has been meeting on Mondays from 2 to 4 for the last 25 years. While we're very sympathetic to the needs of the maintenance people, we don't think that they should be telling the people who occupy the community center when they can meet and when they can't be. And that's essentially what it's about. So who is responsible in terms of uh, telling the cleaning crew when they should be cleaning and when they shouldn't be cleaning? Well, I think it probably comes from the town supervisor. Uh -huh. Since he has um, made the case that because our art teacher is unable to change the class, we should change the art teacher or, or disband the class. And of course, everybody resents that, and that's why you have all the seniors coming in today to support the art teacher and the class and to reject the notion that the uh, maintenance crew dictate the times that the classes meet. Now, we, we, we feel it's the tail wagging the dog, so to speak. Now, have you talked to the supervisor about your problem? Uh, no, but we have written letters back and forth to Terry Rosenblum, who has been carrying the cudgels for him, so to speak. So, uh, and Terry just was here addressing us and trying to solve the problem, she said. And? And she is going to speak to Ray, and she implied that it's Ray's decision. It's interesting that they are able to do their artwork today, and they are, they've been here for years, and they're still processing their uh, beautiful paintings, and we're in a very artsy place today, and I think the idea that uh, politics is the art of compromise, perhaps that's what we should have, a big compromise, and uh, you know, give the seniors the benefit of the doubt and allow them their time. 
Let's let's do it right. That's what I think. My name is Judith Bogus and I'm the art teacher for the Senior Recreation Committee and for the uh, seniors here. And uh, we've been this art class has been meeting here for 20 years on a Monday uh, from two to four and we never had a problem with any of the maintenance crew or supervisors in the past uh, with the time that we're here. And we're finding it a little upsetting that a person from a maintenance crew can tell a supervisor what hours he will be working and when he will be cleaning or doing maintenance on the buildings here and that the supervisor is supporting this. Uh, so it's starting to feel like a little vendetta or something. We don't know what is going on or why this is happening. And uh, we were told, well, this maintenance comes in from 7.30 to 3.30 and so forth. Well, then why aren't they cleaning from 7.30 to 9 o'clock in the morning when no one is in the building? Um, I don't know. I don't understand what is going on. Um, <laughs> I've been just told now today that Perhaps I will have an art class or I won't have an art class. No, I do have an art class today. Next week, I don't know what's happening. This isn't the first incidence of problems we've had with the uh, town board and the supervisor. Uh, we came one day to art class and found the doors locked. Uh, evidently, the supervisor decided that he wanted to uh, change all the locks to have more control over who has a key going to, uh, you know, and who's going, coming and going into the building here, which is fine, but then uh, he expected every teacher to go to dispatch, sign out the key, and uh, then go back and return the key and so forth, when before we've always had keys uh, in order to get in and out of the building. And um, let's face it, any 12-year-old with a crowbar from China could break into this community center. They don't need a key. So it's not about um, controlling um, vandalism or any of the things that we were told that it was about. So. Um, senior citizens went to the town board meeting. They were made to wait until midnight and then I guess the video feed was cut off when they got up to speak and they did fight the supervisor and they did get the keys for the teachers to come back in and uh, be able to teach their classes without having to go sign out a key at dispatch. So there's some rumors saying that this uh, killing the art class is a vendetta. It's a way of getting back for him having lost space about the key. Um, who knows? Um, we don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> we really don't know where it's coming from. But wait a minute, the art class is not scheduled to be here today. So I said, well, how come it wasn't? We've been in meetings for 25 years. Who took them off? And she said, well, Jackie. Jackie manages the calendar. I said, who told Jackie? She did. She said, I guess I did. Jackie does yeah, but Terry admitted she did. So then Terry called and she said, I'm going to call the cleaning crew off today because she saw who was coming. <laughs> All the seniors are here plus, you know. So. Oh, you don't mess with Grey Panthers. <laughs> you do not mess with Grey Panthers. No way. Uh, they will stick to their guns and they won't back off and they will remember you at election time. My goodness. I know that cleanup crew really needs some alteration. That smell in there is like pink Drano. It's like, it, talking about being green, I don't think they got any green. But this green. issue isn't exactly about with the cleaning crew. No, I didn't. As, I didn't. as she says, no, the, the, no, the tail I, wags the dog. Yeah, I don't know. what. Yeah. So what's, what are they going to do? What's, uh, how did this I don't off? know. Uh, I'm, I'm, um, I think uh, it got resolved once they saw that these seniors meant business. Yeah. And I, I think it's rather so. disrespectful because... I mean, in other cultures, we respect and revere the elderly. And uh -huh. they, because they've lived longer lives, therefore they can give us of their wisdom. Absolutely. Rather than us shipping them Out off to somewhere. some, uh, yeah, like old used cars. Absolutely. Yeah. So everybody knows enough to support the arts and exactly. you know, help yeah. 
help the elders across the street and listen to their stories. Exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah, hopefully they'll be a little bit um, less tight with the rules about the community center and start letting people that want to use it. Well, use after it this, after this, this, yeah. by the way, teaches us, all of us, that if we believe strongly enough in something and we feel that we are in the right, we mm -hmm. should do something about it. Yeah. Amen. And Myself included. And they thank they you, showed Sandy. us how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So thanks for coming tonight and You're sharing very that welcome. news with us. You're Good very to welcome. Keep abreast of what's happening. And, and uh, watch out for uh, butterflies. Watch out for butterflies. Because it happens. Butterfly power. You can turn <laughs> into one. Uh, thanks, Sandy. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to read a poem by a fellow who has um, helped the Cuomo property become what it is today. Such a good community spot for dogs and folks and all sorts of animals. It's called Beach Leaves. And then after that, we're going to watch um, a fellow with an English accent talk about how to uh, transform the oil industry into, yeah, so I'll give you a minute. How about that? This one's called Beaches in Winter. Our debt to the beaches should last throughout the year. You could like make some weird things go on because who wants to look at me while I read a poem? Like put, put like a different color on or something. This is like, okay, this is like always perpetually in Pee Wee's Playhouse. Ah, oh, okay. All right, beaches in winter. Let's start again. Our debt to the beaches should last throughout the year. In winter, their light brown leaves add color to a landscape gray and drear. When the woods are otherwise silent, their gentle rustling adds some cheer. Alone among our hardwood tree friends, they keep their old leaves till spring is near. Like old golden warriors guarding young green shoots, then wind blown they join their comrades brittle and sere. You ready for the movie? I've been like five minutes ago. This is like the fade out. It should have been done. So I, I did a 26-city tour of the United States last year, and it was a very interesting time to be over there. I was in North Carolina, reading the papers in the backyard with the guy who lived next door to where I was staying. It was the day that news first broke from Iraq of this united Sunni and Shia joint uprising against the U.S.-led occupation. Same day, there was news of an African Union declaration condemning U.S. foreign policy. And the guy next door said to me, I'll tell you this much about the United States, we are sure bringing about world unity. Because the one thing unites the entire planet, hatred of us. It's like y'all became one big nation called the rest of the world. And I said to him, well, actually, we did. In fact, we've even got our own flag. He went, oh, yeah? What is it? I said, same as yours, but on fire. <laughs> I was skip diving in Kentish town, and in this skip, I discovered a book called Marching to the Drums, From the Kabul Massacre to the Siege of Mafeking. And it was a fairly gung-ho military history full of stirring tales of colonial daring do in the British Empire's overseas campaigns from 1860 to 1902. So you've got a chapter on Gordon of Khartoum, On Demand, Charge of the Light Brigade. And at the top of each little chapter, 
there's this little introductory standalone paragraph in bold just explaining what the British Army happened to be doing in Afghanistan, Egypt, Sudan. And because of the people who read, gung-ho military histories like Marching to the Drums are really only interested in one thing. Weapons. Weapons and maybe tactics, but on the whole, weapons. <laughs> there was a refreshing honesty, candor, and lack of hypocrisy about this little standalone introductory paragraph. With its opening in 1869, the Suez Canal became the principal waterway to Britain's most valuable overseas possession, India. It was therefore imperative for the British Army to control all traffic through the Suez Canal, which meant, first of all, crushing the indigenous independence movements of Egypt and the Sudan. <laughs> Now, the Webley automatic Gatling gun was able to fire 500 rounds a minute. This proved more than a match for the scimitar swords and wicker breastplates of the Mahdi army. <laughs> and this bull stating of the geopolitical facts of life strikes the modern reader with the force of revelation. For there is, in our own time, an absolute taboo among the corporate news media and the political class against mentioning anything to do with the strategic and economic reasons for war. As witness, just over a year ago, I'm listening to the Today program on Radio 4. And there was this little phrase they kept repeating on the half hour, every half hour. The G8 has today endorsed an American plan to bring democracy to the Middle East. The G8 has today endorsed an American plan to bring democracy to the Middle East. The level of naivety necessary before you can talk about an American plan to bring democracy to the Middle East, you will not find that level of naivety anywhere outside of 1970s porno films. <laughs> Gee, mister, you mean the time machine only works if I take off all my clothes? <laughs> the G8 has today endorsed an American plan to bring democracy to the Middle East. And which country were they discussing that particular morning? Why, Iran, of course, which until 1953 was a secular democracy. In 1951, Mohammed Mossadegh elected Prime Minister by a landslide majority on a mandate of nationalizing the Anglo-Persian oil company, now known as Record Profit Posting BP. What happens next? The Foreign Office recommend a coup d'etat. Churchill puts up a million and a half dollars to finance the coup. Eisenhower agrees to match this with a million dollars on the sole proviso that Theodore Roosevelt's grandson and CIA Middle East Station Chief in Tehran, Kermit Roosevelt, will be point man for the coup. This is agreed, the money's transferred, and Kermit Roosevelt's first action is to spring General Fazlollah Zahidi from jail, where he is languishing on account of being a Nazi collaborator. And this is the man that Kermit Roosevelt has chosen to lead the military part of the coup. Incidentally, I hope you're all impressed by the way I'm just letting the whole Kermit angle slide. <laughs> For I feel that other comedians would not have had the self-discipline to walk away from that rich storehouse of comedic possibility, but would instead have become mesmerized by a mental comedy graph whose x-axis was Middle Eastern politics and whose y-axis was children's TV programs of the 1970s, and would have attempted to plot the intersection points and asymptotes thereon, but I feel that yes, we could have that laugh, but at a terrible psychic cost. <laughs> it would be that from here to the end of the show, there would be a tinny, hollow sound to the laughter, and a collective shared sense of disappointment, <laughs> of the spectrum of possibility having been brutally diminished. And we got through the show fine, like any other, and gone our separate ways, but there would have been this sense, perhaps on a pre-conscious level, but real, <laughs> nonetheless, of disappointment. And it would all have been traceable back to this moment, had we gone down that particular comedic pathway, which is why we shall not be taking that particular moment. That said, however, be advised, I shall shortly be using the phrase puppet regime. I don't want to get overexcited or to overreact in any way. You are a sophisticated, more for audience. You will credit me that that is the given 
socio-political terminology, the only accurate phraseology wherewith to describe how Kermit Roosevelt installed Shah Reza Pahlavi's absolute dictator of Iran, head of the notorious Savak secret police, which in 1976, he's still there, amnesty described as responsible for the worst human rights atrocities on planet Earth. This was Britain and America bringing democracy to the Middle East in 1953 style. Yes, but that was then. This is now. Now there's an American plan, endorsed by the G8, I might add, to bring democracy to the Middle East, generally, not just in Iran, but in Iraq. Where the United States is building 14 permanent U.S. military bases on Iraqi soil. Was so profound is the corporate news media's acquired naivety, the learnt ability not to see or hear the uncomfortable fact that they could be interviewing a four-star US general while he is laying bricks on the very building site of one of these US military bases and still notice nothing wrong. There's the general going, that's right. As soon as the Iraqis have an election, we're out of here. General, don't worry about that. Just wait for them to vote for us to leave. We're gone. <laughs> they vote to turn this $4 billion base into a youth club. We'll just swallow that. Don't worry about that. I can't help feeling that this bit would work better if my bricklaying mime looked less like the gayest 17th century French fop playing a game of Gaylord tennis or dandy racquetball. How about you, sir? No, you. The rules of Gaylord tennis is the first player to produce a bead of perspiration loses. Lord Fontenoy, your brow perspires, methinks. And no, that is a sequin from your mother's breast. <laughs> My point. Ah, uh, no, for points are further deducted for appearing to care about the result. Scoring is bourgeois. <laughs> An American plan to bring democracy to the... Okay, so we have Jewel Egg Inc. Um, going to bless us with some good, fine music. She's going to play a song, and the blah, 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 the ecologically green economist is going to be here as the starshine maker. And they're going to discuss what they just heard, because they have never heard this music before in this format, which is live on this show and sitting in this chair while all of these pieces are in place and in order. And then they will discuss their thoughts and feelings, what they have in mind now, and according to what the music they just heard. And here it is, folks. Exercise number one. All right, we call this the happy song now. <laughs> Wind shall be stilled in the shadows When time itself is undone And the birds call out at his passing And the clouds roll away from the sun And the clouds roll away from the sun As the clouds roll away from the sun the cloud 
clouds roll away from the sun as the clouds roll away from the sun All right. well, I can say that I love this song at Jules very much so I'm always glad to hear this inspiring song and to say the cl clouds rolled away from the sun. Well, today, people, we're just up in Albany talking to our local senators for you in regards to this whole hemp issue, um, legalization of marijuana, and or bringing it off of Schedule 1, which means it has no uh, medicinal properties, and or that it's uh, addictive and or abusive. And so we all know at this point in time, we're no longer in 1938, so we are taking a time to educate our senators and bring them into the fact that the clouds need to roll away from the sun and we need to start using our position to help the people and we're dealing with economic crisis people and that's why we need to take it off <coughs> schedule one because if we do that means hemp is clear to be grown in New York State and that's what we're talking about by creating the green economy that Philip our uh, green economist has been talking about we're talking about the same vision which is using the day. So all I can say, guys, is these people are really, uh, um, really star uh, starstruck, and they're awed at the information, and they're all clutching onto these packets and going, we got some homework to do. So I want to encourage you that it's really happening. Things are moving and shaking. We got a rally happen on April 17th. We hope you're there to represent. We're going to have different booths. If anybody has any hemp-related products out there that they would like to promote, please give a call because you have an opportunity to uh, show up your skills and they we're going to have speakers. And they could do it at um, the Go Green Fair on May mm -hmm. 15th at yeah. the Mountain View Studio. After that as well. Cause, and then we're also talking, you know, because hemp is multifaceted. It uh, could be plastics, building material. It could be part of that card that Journey's just putting in front of you, that ink, Sh that I paper, to do with that. <laughs> or the little elf or the little fairy that, you know. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, we could get rid of some of those mucky petroleum clouds. We could have more sun. Exactly. That's what we're right? talking Instead about. Instead of being the bullseye of the petroleum <laughs> industry. Ah, you like that? <laughs> yes. How about this? It's like danger, danger, right? Don't we know these guys? <laughs> We're telling you all. We can have happy oceans, happy clean oceans. Happy clouds. Happy people. Happy pee pee, happy healthy. Clean, non emission fuels. Yay! Yay! What are you talking we're about? Happy and healthy. Yay! We can play yeah. some chess. No. It stimulates the mind. Hemp seed helps the Here mind. Here we go. Happy fish. <laughs> Fish. Happy fish. Petroleum fish. economy equals happy fish. Hey, isn't that the fish that was thrown on land by a monsoon? Ah. All right, so what do you to think grow in Death Valley. Look, it's the economically green economist from the Transvolution Gazette. Ah, we're back in the valley. We had a milestone a week ago Friday. We had a meeting of the Progressive Green Coalition for the Mid-Hudson Valley. We were expecting 75, possibly 100 people. Got 100 labels uh, so everyone would have a name tag and be able to meet others and socialize. Turned out to be approximately 200, 210 people that showed up. And you could hear a pin drop in the room. Everyone was really involved and it was a learning exercise across the board. It was like the roots of the hemp plant, which is the rope of Jacob's ladder, coming alive. And as to the music that we were just listening to, what I saw, we lift the clouds from the sun so that it's no longer a ball of fire. We're floating on an egg on the surf of the sea of the galaxy. And in order to move the clouds, we still have to stay within the membrane of Humpty Dumpty's egg. 
so we can observe the galaxy in a daytime sky like it used to be when time was then and we didn't have the chemicals of, 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 right, you're correct. The petrochemical cartels, the petrochemical, pharmaceutical, international food industry, globalized general electric cartels, that's the parent of them all. That's J.P. Morgan and John D. Rockefeller. In fact, those are the parents of the papacy back in, right, 1872, when the King uh, Emmanuel of Italy confiscated the uh, lands of the Vatican and the Vatican and was going to turn it to a museum, and it long came Standard Oil Trust number whatever, and they negotiated for the papacy. So that today, by a majority of one, the simple man, trained by the youth guard of the religionist Christian Reich of Germany for a pope. Huh? Something weird going on out there? Green. We are at the fork in the road. Green, green, green. Jacob, Jacob's Ladder and the Beanstalk? That's hemp. That's the biblical hemp plant. And that's the bud that was Ezekiel was arrested for. <laughs> Cannabis was always to the elite. Cocaine is always to the elite. The dreck is put out for the... Uh, public. <laughs> uh, what difference does it make, you know? Is George Walker Bush much more diabolical than uh, Adolf Hitler? And so what? What are we going to do about it? Going to pick up your automatic weapons that Lou Dobbs keeps talking about? Huh? You're going to bring everyone to their knees, according to the government, as Lou Dobbs is talking about? We're going to get rid of all the Americans that came north of their border, as Lou Do Dobbs is talking about? And why did they come north? If NAFTA was a fair trade agreement, they would not be here. They were too happy on their own lands, growing their own organic food because they had never heard of anything else like we did not in our country until Biblical Day Two, World War Two, when uh, doctors were uh, paid twice the fee to have their child in the hospital and those children were uh, being taken from their mother's wombs with forceps so they wouldn't be touched by human hands, and then fed a formula, are we taking the fork in the road, or are we going to wait for the crossroads? Wait for the crossroads, we're going to be slime on the macadam of that super corporate highway. Take the fork in the road, you've got to bend down and pick up that fork, because that highway is organically green. Where's the highway? Where God put the heart in the shape of our body? On the left for a reason. This point in history. On the left for a reason. This point in eternity. That's E T U R N I T. Turn. The fork in the road. The green fork in the road, the keystone of that bridge that can only be looked at in a daytime sky. Hey folks, we got a call. We got a call. Yeah. Woodstock Television, would you share your vision? Won't you share your vision? Of the galaxy in a daytime sky. Thank you. 
Woodstock Television, come and share your vision. Oh. So, folks, if your doctor tells you you've come down with this disease or the other, remember, emphasize, Doc, I want all-inclusive blood tests. I want to know what degree of pesticides are in my blood system. I want to know what degree of household chemicals are in my blood system. And then we will discuss further. Understand, Doc? That's all-inclusive blood test, not the routine. It is no longer an honor to have cancer, Doc. It is no longer an honor to have diabetes, Doc. It is no longer an honor to have AIDS, Doc. It is no longer an honor to have autism, Doc. Do we understand each other? It's your insurance that's going to be in question. All inclusive blood test. Thank you. From the ecologically green economist. Let's do another song. Come on, do another song. Give us another tune, Jewel. Yeah. All right. Okay, what can we do along? I don't think I have any more ecologically green songs, but. Lifting of the soul song. <laughs> oh, we should get it. Okay. Sorry. It's environmentally green.